Hey everyone, thank you for um, taking the time to join me. Now the last video I put up was the um, really quick video where I think it's less than a minute where I just wanted to show realistically how long it's going to take to take a brand new chisel and I think there's phraseology used these days which is like preparing. I would just call it sharpening. You just pick up the tool, sharpen it and you get on with it. Um, cutting a piece of paper isn't a particularly good test. Um, We've just got some softwood here. Again, using the method that I did, we can shave away timber no problem in a pretty controlled way. It's going to be more than acceptable for general woodworking. You can take a look in there. It's all nice and fine. Okay. And again, I could take a little bit longer and polish that a little bit more on the strop with a bit more metal paste if I wanted to. So um, yeah, let's get into it. So you can see with that initial video, it's it's super quick how you can prepare these chisels. And I picked the budget option mainly because I think picking really expensive stuff and showing how to set that up isn't really necessary. And again, if it's really expensive, my personal belief, is that you shouldn't have to do anything. You literally raise a burr, remove a burr and get to work, which is kind of what I've done with these. Now, if I show you on the backs of these, you can see there is more machine marks on them. But with the sharpening method I put in, you can see that around the edge there, we've got the same effect as we've got there. So those, that honed level is the same at the, at the apex of that sharpened bevel. So that's absolutely fine. And that wasn't just that one, that was on another one I tried, you can see it's referencing nicely, no problem at all. So if a cheap, more than likely Chinese set of chisels can achieve that, you should be absolutely fine. And that was done on a Norton India stone. Now, how much it should cost you to do your own chisels, again, it can be entirely up to you. If you want to follow, again, especially with some of the high end of stuff, if you want to follow their exact routines, you should probably do that because it might affect your warranty claims. But that Norton India stone, that costs um, 30 quid, 30 pounds. You could look at what seems to have become quite a popular sharpening method, which is using three diamond plates. I don't know why you need three, um, I'd probably just go for one. Um, I'd probably go for a 600 or a 1200. I did a little look when I was just doing this, but if you go for the three, which seems quite popular, that's going to set you back 234 pounds. For me, that's an expensive luxury. I really wouldn't want that. Um, water stones, you can get a basic set for about 90 quid um, from a really good um, UK supplier. That's okay, um, and a bit more of an advanced setup for 200 quid. And with water stones, you can go off on a real tangent. You can use natural Japanese stuff. I've got no experience of that. I have used water stones a bit. They work fine, but I think it's just what I'm used to. I'm not really used to them, and just applying a bit of oil to a stone, for me, that works great. So water stones for me are out. Using abrasive papers to sharpen stuff. The only time I use abrasive paper is when I need to really restore something that's bad. Say that I've got something from the, the um, waste transfer station, the dump tip, car boot sale, whatever, and it's pitted. Then I'll put some sticky backed abrasive onto a flat surface and I'll just abrade any rust, any, any rubbish off of that. Or if I was in a pinch and I need to do a bit of grinding work, I wouldn't bother using any abrasives that are just paper to sharpen stuff personally again you do what you want there's no no skin off my nose um because you can tear them easily with that kind of thing you need to i think use a pulling motion all the time as you probably saw me use on this bit of wood which just has some auto some auto sole metal polish i think there's an american brand called durasols probably the same kind of jazz um so yeah, the abrasive papers, it, you, if you tear them because you're... It, and that gets expensive. We're talking, you know, that Norton India Stone is going to last you, your life, and you can pass it on, you know, it's an heirloom stone. 
it'll last you and it will keep going and keep going. So that 30 quid, those diamond plates will work, um, they'll wear out, it is possible. The only time I would look to use diamond is if I had something really hard. If you've, and not Japanese tools, you don't want to put them on diamonds, I don't think. Again, I'm not an expert with Japanese stuff, so don't quote me. But if I had something hard like carbide, but we don't use carbide and a chisel. Um, and also the way I choose to sharpen is I don't want to work the whole bevel, especially on a wider chisel. I would choose to do it maybe on a thinner one, but I don't want to remove all of that every single time. Personally, I choose to do all that back there with grinding. And I don't use dangerous stuff, which is like sparks and needs difficult control and you can overheat it. I do it in a very safe, consistent way. And it makes sharpening so fast. You know, and also, there is this popularity now for sharpening stones to have moved into wider sizes. So this vintage stone that I've picked up, it's quite narrow. It's, it's well under two inches. And all these wide stones, the difficulty is, is that it's quite easy to start dishing them out and creating hollows and cavities and then people are worrying about flattening them. That's the one good thing about diamonds, they do stay flat. But that India stone is hard. On its red side, it is hard as bilio. And if you just use the whole stone, I don't think you're going to need to flatten it anytime soon. I certainly don't. I can't remember with my new India, from when I bought it, to ever having the need to flatten it you know it's just it doesn't happen you know it just it starts to marry itself up with your tools you don't have to worry but what's great about these narrow stones is the whole movement that you've got to use especially with a plain iron you know a lot of people think you know a great big plain iron on that it's not going to work you know i know you would sharpen this over take it to pieces you know how am i going to sharpen where well, you skew it for starters or you overlap it and move it around so the whole stone gets used and if like this individual has done, they've put in two blocks at the end, you can run right over the edge of your stone, you know. So there's lots of ways that you can prepare a chisel, but I just wanted to do that quick one minute video with no added guff, just to say, look, if you've bought chisels and you need to sharpen them to do it, each chisel has the potential that it could be done within a minute. And that was for an inch one. I would say if you're taking longer than five minutes, the tool you've bought is defective. That's personally what I would do and I would be in contact with a manufacturer, whether it's cheap Amazon stuff or whether it's the most high end stuff you can get or the sharpening medium is wrong or your technique is wrong. Um, so yeah, it really shouldn't take too long. And you know, some people might be saying, well, how do you know this back is, f or the face of this chisel here, that it's flat? Well, I'd propose you a question back. What do you, what do you want that to be flat for? It'd give me a reason that that needs to be flat. And what is this term flat? We're not even giving it a, a defined measurement. All that needs to happen here is it needs to reference on the stone without rocking around and it needs to remove a burr. You need to be able to remove a burr here and remove a burr here. And for safety, you can see I'm moving my finger that way, never that way, always away. So there's no need for flatness. If you're chopping through a dovetail, even if I was to dovetail a piece of wood that thick, I'd be going in halfway from both sides. You know, it's it's perfectly fine. And if anything, I'd probably undercut slightly so my, my, my joint lines would come up tight. I can't think of a purpose where you'd need to get that to an engineering tolerance. It wouldn't make any difference. And I think it would actually be wrong. You're better off to have a bias and most things in woodwork, and you want to bias things in your favour, trying to have, in my opinion, a mindset where things are perfectly optically flat or whatever, is absolute nonsense. If I had to work alongside somebody and they, they bought me a set of chisels, you know, after we'd had a bit of a chat and cleaned them up, whatever, had a look, got a feel for them, I don't know, half an hour tops, having a bit of a chat with them, and then I'd expect them to be able to get going with it. So what I'm going to do in another video, because these all for me, they get super bogged down super quick, is I'm going to do how I do it freehand. And hopefully that will be informative to you to my approach. Again, you, you copy anyone else's approach. It doesn't bother me. I'm not looking to change anybody. I'm also going to do one with a honing guide as well, because I'm acutely aware that we're all different. 
and we're all coming from different standpoints. I'm lucky to come from a background for this kind of stuff where it's I'm practically based. I did an apprenticeship. I used to hang around my dad and go to work and around people who did that kind of stuff. So this stuff is kind of, it's in there. I, I know what I'm doing to satisfy my own needs. Um, but a lot of people don't. You know, I, I do things like if I've got to repair my motorbike, if it's all mechanical stuff, I'm not good with it, but I can mend the basic stuff. But if there's some electrical stuff, I'm like, oh my God, what am I doing? So I appreciate that people need different things. So a, a cheap and simple honing guide arrangement can be really welcome because if that allows someone to have some fun in their workshop and to make things, a honing guide can be a brilliant thing. And I don't think anybody should be ashamed for thinking a honing guide means that they're not professional or they're called training wheels or whatever it is. If you want to use a honing guide, use one and use it all the time. Personally for me, I think once you get into it, you'll probably not want to use it that much, especially if you use probably oil stones like I do, they're, they're not so compatible. Um, so yeah, for me, you can pick up an inexpensive set of chisels. Like I say, there's a set of six there from Amazon. Um, I believe they're basically the, the same company just churning out the same ones that used to be available in German supermarkets. And I think this brand, if you look on Amazon, they've sold a lot of stuff anyway. So about 40 pounds and you get six chisels, which are going to do you just fine. And I think for the projects that I've got in mind that I'm going to hopefully try and film, I'm going to be using the basic toolkit because I don't want it to seem that you've got to have always the best stuff for the best results. You know, just I want to try and make it as affordable and sensibly as possible. So you imagine, you know, if you drop 234 quid on, you know, stones and then Maybe you've gone for a higher end set of chisels, you know, even a mid range set at 160. All of a sudden, before you've started, it's like, whoa. Whereas a set of those, about 40, that, 30, a bit of baby oil and whatever, and some metal polish, you're done for 80 quid. And if you, you'll be fine with that forever. You know, if you're in a situation one day where someone wants to give you a gift, you want to get something new, you want to switch it up, fine. But I'm reasonably confident with the stuff I'm going to show making. Um, these are going to do fine. These methods are going to work out because I know they do because they worked for me for about 20 years. So I'm fine with that. So I hope you enjoyed that. And um, yeah, videos coming up on how to sharpen the chisels. Then we'll get a feel for it. All right. Thank you. Bye bye.